had a request to make a video on exercises or stretches for back pain made worse by sitting in a less ergonomic environment. I've had many clients in the same boat. Since the pandemic, they've had to move their office to their home, sometimes sitting in front of a kitchen table. It's not the best seating arrangement. I'll have to preface this video and any stretch or exercise that I show with some general info because there is no generic stretch or exercise that targets all back pain. There may be stretches and exercises that help alleviate, per, for example, 80% of cases. However, if someone of the 20% sees that video, does the exercise or stretch and makes themselves worse, that's not a good situation to be in. The exercise or stretch prescription has to be specific to the case. There can be many reasons why you're experiencing back pain. It could be discogenic, meaning a bulging intervertebral disc is pressing on a spinal nerve root, causing pain. It can be caused by arthritic changes in the intervertebral joints, also pressing on a spinal nerve root, causing pain. It can be muscular imbalance causing pain. It can be misalignment of the hips. It can be a disc tear, an end plate fracture, facet joint irritation. It can also be a combination of two or more of these things. A detailed clinical assessment is absolutely necessary in order to come up with a sound protocol to improve the situation. An in-depth initial consultation can take up to four hours to come up with a precise diagnosis. Yes, I've conducted assessments that long, and I've also helped many of my clients help alleviate their back pain by giving them the correct treatment and homework protocol for their specific condition. In this video, I'll go over a protocol based on a specific case study. Before I get into that, here are some resources for you to consider if you are experiencing back pain and would like to help yourself. First, a great introductory resource is Back Mechanic by Stuart McGill. It goes over possible contributing factors to back pain, how you can determine what your cause of pain is, and come up with a plan to alleviate it. I've ordered this book and given it to several of my clients to help them understand what might be going on with their backs. As much as I can sit with someone and explain the mechanism of their pain, it's far more likely for the information to sink in when the client has a book to read that they can read at their own pace and flip back a few pages if they need some extra time to visualize and grasp a concept. If you're interested in learning more about back pain and steps that you can take to help find your pain triggers and diminish them, I recommend Back Mechanic by Stuart McGill. You can find it on his website, backfitpro.com along with other books and back supports that can help your seating position while you work from home. Let's get into my case study. This person was deadlifting a heavy weight several months ago and felt something in her right side lower back. This developed into a nagging pain in her right side lower back. Now it's being made worse when she's sitting long hours in a less optimal position working from home. When she was deadlifting, it didn't hurt right away. The pain was more noticeable the next day, which is characteristic of a first degree muscle strain. Through assessment, I determined it was a posterior disc bulge. The prescription is to stabilize and stiffen the spine and avoid constant stress to the site of injury to allow time for the joint and the nerve to recover. For this specific case study, the condition has not been alleviated and is being made worse by a less optimal seating arrangement, a worse position for the spine. Here are some things that can be done to help improve the situation. Number one is remove the aggravating factor. In this case, it would be positions of lumbar flexion under load. For example, sitting slouched over. Another example is stretches that curve the back forward, like straddle stretch. Avoid that. You would also have to watch your form when you're doing not only exercises, but daily tasks, like washing dishes, tying your shoes, gardening, you have to make sure that you're keeping a neutral curve in your spine and not flexing forward when you're doing things. Keep that in mind. Number two is improve the endurance of the muscles that stabilize your spine. You may have heard of the McGill Big Three, the McGill Curl Up, the Side Plank, and the Bird Dog. For my case study, my client has shown that she has good core endurance. However, I would still have her perform the McGill Big Three daily so that she can practice stiffness throughout her spine. From what I've found so far on the net in terms of demonstrating and explaining the big three, I like this video the most from Squat University. I've also linked it in my description. Other than enhancing core endurance and avoiding positions and movements that continue to injure the spine, for my specific case study with the posterior disc bulge, walking may also help her condition. For example, 
Three 10 minute walks a day can help improve the function of muscles that surround the spine, specifically the quadratus lumborum muscles. So here's a quick review from my case study with posterior disc bulge made worse by sitting in a less favorable office environment. Number one is improve your posture while sitting. Number two is avoid positions that mimic the mechanism of injury. Number three is practice pristine form, stabilizing the spine while exercising. Number four is practice the McGill Big Three daily. And number five, go on at least three 10 minute brisk walks daily.